Hey there, I'm Tiffany Youngren, host of Next Step Nation, where we help podcasters and YouTubers with vision become preeminent thought leaders in their industries. You are about to have the incredible opportunity to listen as we dig into the why, who, and what of a podcaster show. Then at the end, we will identify one powerful how, one action that she can take for results in the next 30 days. Today, let's welcome Brittany Dixon, host of the Process for Profit show. Brittany, welcome. Hello. Thank you so much for having me today. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I'm so excited to talk to everyone about your, talk to you about your show. And so ever, and I think everyone's going to love it too. So yeah. uh, the process for profit show has released 103 episodes since September of 2019. So you just celebrated your two-year anniversary until the day of this recording, which is October 19th of 2021. Brittany Dixon, she's the host of the Process for Profit show. She's a podcaster, business strategist, and productivity coach. She helps highly driven online entrepreneurs implement day-to-day -day operation management systems, processes, and strategy so that they can work in their businesses and not always on it. That is okay. I just have to say too, I could geek out about just that all day. So the <laughs> fact that we're going to talk about podcasting and not processes, it's just... Yeah going to be all I can do. I have a whole podcast about processes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That is so great. It's one of my favorite. I love spreadsheets too. Like that. I heard you call yourself the process queen. I'm like, Oh, wasn't that right? Or systems. Yeah. Queen. Are you systems the queen. So, systems you know, queen. just throw queen on the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So why did you start process for profit? Yeah. So, um, when I was really gaining some traction on the business side of things, I had kind of started guest guesting on other people's podcasts. And I really loved it. Like I am the introvert, like behind the scenes. Now, obviously I have to be on video and all the things with what I do. Um, but I loved the behind the scenes and just really being able to provide tons of value. So, um, I had done that so many times and I was like, I could just start my own and then talk about my own thing and then create a lot of content. <laughs> um, so it really was just kind of natural progression of being on other people's shows. And then I was like, Oh, just starting a podcast thing. Can't be that hard. Right. Let's just do it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, um, what is it that, you, so when you started it and even now, what is it that you want to get out of your show? Yeah. So honestly, for me, it was kind of that first step for my ideal client for that kind of like ladder that they're climbing. I actually never started with intent of making money. Um, I knew that it would probably come on the back end, but I really just wanted it to be that like free content pool so that I didn't have to do a ton of video and social media content. I wanted a really good place to send people, um, that they could hear how I teach and all of that kind of thing. Um, so really just diving into that as content was kind of the, the main thing. And then it kind of spiraled from there. Awesome. And so starting it two years ago, I know you're on, I know you're on a break right now, as yeah. we speak from, you know, you'll be taking a hiatus and you've got kids and things like that, things happening in your life. When you think back to two years ago, when you first started, and then now is you're kind of taking another look at your show and how you want to approach it. Ha has it changed? Has your why changed then versus now, or are you doing it yeah. fundamentally for the same reason? Yeah. I mean, I think it's fundamentally, fundamentally for the same reason. It really is just that content piece. I have so many of my one-on-one -on -one clients and my students within my programs that they're like, I was a long time podcast listener before I even came to you. So I really do know that it is that like first step for someone that's not ready to really, um, invest in my types of services. So even still, I, I mean, we've shifted some things and changed some stuff, but the, the core why is really the same. That's awesome. And, um, and you've got to have some reason, like what, let me just ask too. Usually I'm all like, so tell me your why about your show. And people are like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I just want to help people, which I, you know, I'm so horrible, but like, that's my least favorite answer ever. I, <laughs> I, I think it's great to want to help. I, I want to help. Like, look at me, I'm sitting here trying to like help you grow yeah. your show. So I do believe that that is a valid, awesome purpose for doing it but usually there's something else aligned with that. Um, and so one thing that I liked about what you were just saying, and I feel like I can't even pick that apart very much. I don't even know a good question to follow up because I feel like, was there some kind of, I feel like, first of all, let me just finish what I was going to say. Um, I feel like what you're doing with your podcast is in tandem with what you're doing in business. 
So does your why for your podcast, is it stemming more from your why you have your business? And if so, what, what is that? Yeah. Um, so the why with my business, I mean, honestly, I grew up in a super low income family and I just want to show my kids that they can have impact in this world doing what they want to do. And it doesn't have to be the corporate nine to five sitting at a desk, going to college, the whole nine yards. So I actually dropped out of college. I worked in hospitality forever. I was a wedding and event planner. Um, actually when I started the business, I organized people's houses. (laughs) So I kind of went from organizing events to organizing houses, to organizing business. So I was just that like type a super organized person, but, um, the why behind both is really just impact. Um, when I transitioned from organizing houses to finding this online space and organizing businesses in the online space. And my coach was like, Hey, you know, you can reach people like all over the world instead of just in Columbus, Ohio. Um, when I saw that it was this huge light bulb moment of like, oh my gosh, what else can I do if I can reach this many people? So, and that was really in the business. And then it just kind of transitioned into the podcast and it's the same thing because people can listen worldwide. So, um, it's just the impact piece that has kind of, I guess, connected everything together for sure. Oh, I love that. sounds like you're an optimizer, you know, like you go in, (laughs) that's like the, the, thread that holds it all, you know, it's whether you're organizing someone's house or their business life. It's all about how to take what they have and really optimizing it. Yeah. We're all about working smarter, not harder because we all want to do big things and the faster you can do it, the better. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's so great. That's so great. Well, let's talk about a little more about who it is that you're working with. Who have you identified as being your ideal audience? Yeah. And this has been interesting too, just on the business journey, um, kind of transitioning through different types of ideal target audiences, but I have really nailed down that it is that online service provider who is creative. So, um, we work with a lot of content creators, copywriters, digital marketing agencies, things like that. Um, because what we found is those creatives typically don't have the organized structure processes and systems in the brain. They're like, I have this new idea. I want to go do this thing. And I'm like, hold on. We have to create like 17 systems for that. (laughs) Oh Um, so it's that creative person. And we really love working with people in the online space, um, because there's a a ton of common threads that those online service providers actually have. So it makes it easier for us to help implement things. So you would say that that is really your ideal listener as well, then is the same. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And, uh, so when, when someone listens to your show, what, what do you expect or what problem are you solving for them? Let me just ask that. Yeah, for sure. Um, we really are just giving them those like little nuggets and productivity hacks and like those aha tips and tricks. They're like, Oh, that can be done so much faster. So it, it really is to help them as business owners work smarter, not harder. And what we saw was so many people were doing things like the way that took way longer. And we just know that there's so much as entrepreneurs, we have so much impact, but if you're bogged down by all of those systems and backend disorganization, it's really difficult to be able to reach more people. Um, so it is really just tips and tricks and ways to be more organized and ways to create systems systems within their business so that they can free up their time. And so, uh, I mean, first of all, what you're doing, it's, it's, you know, honestly, I'm listening to you. I'm like, Oh, I, (laughs) I, I get this so much because, uh, you know, when we're talking systems and automation, you know, systems really help us be able to delegate honestly. (laughs) And then, and then this automation and, and optimizing how we're doing things, it literally, freeze up time. And so if, if I'm hearing you correctly, like the transformation that they could expect is that they're going from scrambling, unsure how they could go from here to there to being freed up, not only with having more time available, but as they get busier, uh, being in that space of, you know, systems are the key to it that they can scale and still be able to pass those off. Is, am I hearing yeah, you correctly? For sure. um, we like to call it hustle to flow. That might be the name of our program too, but we really want to take those entrepreneurs from like hustle mode and working 17 hours a day and feeling like they're just spinning their wheels constantly to being able to sit down, have a really productive day, close the laptop at 
whatever time they want, honestly, <laughs> and really have the freedom because I see so many business owners start their business and then they work more than a full-time job. <laughs> so, and I was there too, trust me, like it happens very quickly, especially when you love what you do and you're like, I want to help more people and I want to impact more people. Um, but if we're just burning ourselves out in the back end, then it makes it difficult to help more people. So, um, it really is just a free up time. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So when you, how do you right now evaluate whether your content is resonating? And then also have you made any adjustments based on what you find? Yeah. So, um, evaluating things. I mean, we'll look at episodes and see which ones kind of get the most downloads and kind of what those topics are and really seeing what kind of hits with people. A lot of it too, we'll go into just our social media and content and kind of see what's kind of taking off there and then use that same type of content for the podcast. Um, this is probably something we could get better at for sure. We don't dive super deep into the metrics, <laughs> um, because we do have a really good system to get it out and produce it. And I have so many things going on that a lot of times I'm not looking at those metrics because it's my free source of content. So, um, but I, I definitely think that looking at those helps us to kind of decipher what's working, what's not working. Um, and then just talking to people, <laughs> honestly, yeah. when I talk to these people and they're coming, they're like, I listened to your podcast and I really love this. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Let me make it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk about this more, you know, I found, you know, I, first of all, the metrics for podcasting still hasn't caught up to say what we would expect for a website or something yeah. like that or social media. And I like a lot that you're really taking your outcome that you want, which is the content. Like it's, it's all about, this is the journey that people are taking when they find you. And then how are they progressing through that journey? And it sounds like that's really your measure um, of not only the response, but the success of it. And I always say too, like, what good is a hundred thousand downloads? If no one's talking to you, you haven't made any sales, yeah. you haven't made any new relationships, <laughs> like who cares, you know? And a lot of people, that's it. Like they, they're like, Hey, yay, me, you know, breaking their arm, yeah. patting themselves <laughs> on the back. And you're like, but have you? you know, well, yeah, I'm just trying to monetize now. It's like, okay, well now you're going to make a few bucks off the yeah. six figure listeners. So I love that. Um, it's holistic. Like, I feel like what you're doing is very holistic and the results that you're seeing reflect that. And the content, like for me, that's ideal content because you're directly responding to the people that you're working with. So I think that's really great. Yeah. And it's never, never been about the numbers for us. Um, I mean, we've hit 15,000 downloads, which is not crazy big. I mean, I, I think that's crazy big, but <laughs> that's also it's like, hey, somebody's I, out there. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, there's 15,000 people listening to me. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, but it, again, it, it was never about the numbers for us. We never intended to monetize it. Now down the road, we absolutely have plans of potentially doing that. Right. Not something that's super, um, forefront or anything like that. But I think because it was about the content and about them just getting to know us and moving through that journey. It was just easier for us to kind of create that organic holistic content for sure. Okay. Awesome. I love it. So let's move on. So we just talked about, we first started out with talking about your why, and you gave us a good illustration of exactly why you're doing it, how it fits in with your business, you know, what your heart is for your business, why you're doing that. And then just now we were talking about your who, um, again, it, it, uh, correlates really well with what you're doing with your company. Um, I love that hustle and flow. I think that that's, uh, I, I talk a lot about audience promise. That's something that always comes up on our show and it has everything to do with, if I were to go and listen to your show, would I know? I mean, we're all busy. Like would I know why, what I'm, I'm investing my time. What am I going to get back out of it? And so having that audience promise of, what problem are you going to solve and what's my transformation? And I think that hustle and flow is a really good, uh, it, it kind of sticks in your head. Like, okay, I can see that. I could see how that would be. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like the audience promise. It's a little bit of the transformation, you know, 
really going from hustle to flow, you know, kind of thing. So I like it. So let's talk about the, what that's our third is our, what, so let's talk about some things that you're doing. That's already working. And you and I talked a little bit early, uh, right before the show that this is not going to be the show where everyone it's just obvious. So we've talked a lot about, you know, your who and why, but what everyone's about to hear is that there's like a million things that you're doing perfectly. I love what you're doing. I love your brand. I love your blog. Um, I, I just think that there are so many things, I mean, and really this hot seat is all about leveraging what you're already doing. So if someone's out there and you're, and you've listened to our show and you're like, oh my gosh, this is where we have to hear about how you need to have a blog and you need to have an audience promise. Guess what? We just knocked those two things out. So (laughs) now my work is cut out for me, but I'm not worried at all because we can always just make a little adjustment to get a big result and, or any result at all. I mean, just in what you're doing in the creating of the, of the podcast and then redistributing the content, I think just shows that you you're doing it already where you're taking one thing and and just improving it on it and getting the most out of it. So anyway, let's talk about your, your, what, and I think that, I think that I'm excited to hear about your results and and what you're seeing from what you're doing. So it's really cool for sure. Um, so some of the things that we're doing that are working, um, like I said, I think that our longtime listeners are then turning into hustle to flow and our one-on-one clients on the back end. Um, we actually have a free community. It's called the, the, uh, productivity pod community, and it's, all, a lot of our episodes really lead them there because that's kind of that next step that's still free. They can still get in, but they start connecting more with people. Um, so really the podcast is there to provide them tons of value and then invite them to the next step of coming into that community. And then the community is kind of the next step to say, start the conversation and say, Hey, you would be a really great fit for hustle to flow. You'd be a really great fit for a while one-on-one client, whatever that kind of looks like. So I feel like that customer journey is really working and we are getting them kind of moving through that. And we've kind of already touched on that a little bit. Um, our workflow for production is super amazing, you know, because I'm a systems person. (laughs) So that's really great. Um, I think that some of the opportunities we have are on the marketing side for sure. Um, we, I think, cause we're so systematized, we will produce it, send it out. It's live. And then like, we never circle back and talk about old episodes. <laughs> we're like, Nope, this is the next new one. Now when we're on downtime, we sometimes do, we'll kind of circulate stuff back through. Um, uh, but I don't think we do a great, great, great job on the marketing side. So, um, I'm trying to think from a, yeah, I mean, what other things kind of I guess maybe questions do you have that I can answer on kind of the things that are working versus not working? Absolutely. So now you've, one thing that you've shared are people who have come back and talked to you about, Oh, I've been listening to your show. How are they finding your show? That's a great question. Um, so I would say uh, our Instagram is our biggest where we kind of hang out and do most of our marketing. Um, we do have it connected with Facebook, so it does like the dual purpose there, but, um, the hanging out is mostly on Instagram. So I would say a lot of people find it there. Um, and this is one thing that we're kind of thinking through as far as rebranding. Um, I think when people hear the word process, it's not as like sexy and they're like, oh, processes, like that sounds <laughs> awful. Um, so yeah, other than actually, us, everyone hates it. <laughs> I know, right? Like I'm like yeah. processes. That's I'm what like, I do oh. for a living. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, can I make a process out of this? We're the um, only ones though. Right, if everybody, but- you know, <laughs> hopefully no one's turned it off because we talked about that the beginning, but yeah, I feel you. I feel you. So I feel like I I think they could be organically searching and randomly finding us. Um, I don't know how likely that is (laughs) just because, uh, I mean, I guess, unless they're looking for profit. I think that's the probably key term that we're going to get out of that. I don't think people are looking for processes. Um, so we're kind of looking at, because we now have this productivity pod community, um, we have, we're starting a shop with some e-commerce. So it's the productivity pod shop. I'm like, why don't we just call it the 
productivity podcast. <laughs> Let's keep oh, the feed going. Yes. Um, so, and this kind of all just came more recently because our core headquarters company is Brittany and co. Um, and actually we kind of transitioned our business name when I named the podcast and now we're kind of transitioning back, you know how that works. Right. But, um, so I think that they could be finding us organically and searching, um, I know that I've been on lots of other podcasts. So just talking about it there, I think is probably a big one, but just searching that, I don't know that that's us. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, okay. I think that was all awesome. And I either, I just went squirrel and totally listened to all that and was just so excited about what you're saying, but where did they, where did they find you specifically? How do they um, I would say Instagram is probably Instagram. When actually, yeah. When we're actually okay. marketing it and putting hashtags and all of that good stuff, that's probably when they're where they're finding us the most. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. I love how all your communities connect though and everything. I think that that's fantastic. And also we, let's see a lot of this. I have all these other questions and it's like, yes, yes. You have a great <laughs> brand. Your brand is amazing. Uh, and then you do have a blog. Do you spend a lot of time on the SEO side of it or is no. it rewritten? Okay. Nope. Most of it is repurposed content. Um, we haven't written actual blogs in a really, really long time. <laughs> okay. So is this the description from your RSS feed or that feeds into your blog right now or how, um, I think so. Are you, are talking about on the, like the show notes blog side of things? Yes. Yeah, I believe so. I think that's how they set that up. Okay, perfect. And then I know you said that you post on, I mean, obviously you post on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. How do you have a, uh, like a specific social media strategy that you're implementing? Um, sure. <laughs> uh, I know you have a system. Yeah, <laughs> I do have a system for it. Is it the best marketing system? Maybe not. But, um, so because I'm like that logistics backend person, like I'll organize that system all day long, but is it the right strategy? Maybe not. Marketing is not my jam. I just want all the people to come to me and I will fix their business and it's great but we're business owners and we have to market. So, um, yes and no, we have a strategy. We do post pretty consistently on Instagram. We typically do at least three to five posts every week. Um, one of those being the social media post, and then obviously just other posts as we're promoting things. Um, we try to kind of follow a like motivation and tips and tools and tech and then workflows. And then we kind of do promotion and testimonials. So we do somewhat have kind of a system that we follow, but again, the podcast is really like, Oh, it's live on Wednesday. And then we like never talk about it again. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's awesome. Um, and then on social media, when you're posting there, what link do you usually send people to? I mean, I know on yeah. it, Instagram it's link in bio, I'm sure. But so do you, um, do you, do you post anywhere else or is it simply on Instagram? It is simply Instagram going to and feeding into our business page on Facebook. Um, we do post sometimes on LinkedIn. It's very, very rare. Um, and then we do send stuff out to our email list as well. Again, very random and sporadic. <laughs> um, but we do the process for profit.co forward slash podcast, because that's kind of the best place to send them because then they can listen to whichever one they're looking at and they can see the show notes and links. And then obviously that's our website. So they can find other stuff as well. That's awesome. In fact, I have to say, I always like, I'm a big proponent of owning where you send people to. So the fact that you send them to your blog is or your podcast page is fantastic. Um, and, uh, in fact, when I do these hot seats, usually I, I would say at least 80% of the time I get sent to Apple or, you know, the, like somebody yeah. like a third party podcast page. And it just hurts my guts. Like, <laughs> oh, like you're sending people, like you want the juice, like you want to yeah. control the narrative. And when you're getting, so sure. I was really, really happy that you, sent me to your, to your page. So Yay. good job. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, let's see here. So what is it, you know, you signed up for this hot seat and you want to grow your show. If what is the ideal outcome that you would get when it comes to improving your show? Like, where do you want to see this go? 
Yeah. I mean, honestly, because it's about the impact and hitting more people, I just would really like to increase the listens. Um, that's kind of the first thing. Cause that's really the only metric I can kind of control. I, I know how many people are doing downloads. <laughs> um, so definitely increasing that. And I think just as a result of that, getting more people in my ecosystem. So, um, if I could organically get 10 people to like start in my funnel and Co- go all the way through to my hustle to flow program a month, like game changer. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, I, I do think that we're missing some things to kind of track that journey. We have the capabilities of doing it with our system. As far as tracking links, we just don't have any of that in place. It hasn't been really top priority, but, um, we could honestly just, we could create a tracking link for each episode to figure out where they're coming from. Uh, we just haven't done that. So, I mean, honestly, just the growth and getting out to more people and then on the back end monetizing, but not, (laughs) uh, more indirectly, I guess, getting those students into hustle to flow just because I know I can impact them and their business in that way. That's awesome. So if you're looking at more listeners and more people in your ecosystem, first of all, that would result in what you're looking for, which is, you know, having more people in your program. What do you think is standing between you and getting that right now? Um, great question. I, I think the episodes maybe could be more bite-sized because I like to change the whole world in 30 minutes. (laughs) And I know this about myself and still I'm like, I want to talk for an hour and give you like all the systems and then just go implement them. So I definitely think they could be kind of more bite size or smaller chunks of what we're talking about. Um, I think the rebranding might have some effect there just from, because productivity is like such a hot button topic. And I have had success with just starting a community called the productivity pod community. So, uh, I do think the rebranding may help just from a people finding us standpoint, because I feel like that's a, people are like, I need to be more productive. <laughs> people aren't like, Hey, help me with my processes. <laughs> um, so I think rebranding for sure is something that I think it could be that like flip of the switch kind of thing that helped with that. Um, and then just a more structured podcast marketing plan, probably <laughs> actually going back. And once we have an episode live, like circling back to it more than one time, I think that could definitely help. Um, yeah, I would say those are probably the top three that I I love it. Okay. And let me ask too, you have, you have interviews and you also have your solo episodes, your solo episodes. If I, if I was seeing, sometimes I only see a snippet and miss the rest of it. So correct me if I'm wrong, but the solos are typically, they look like they're around 15 minutes or so. Yeah. They're typically, yeah. 15 to 20, I think is typically max for solo. And then you've got your interviews, which seem to be, uh, kind of on topic as far as, uh, freeing you up. Like, I feel like there's a theme of like freeing up the, you know, so it's like generally the same thing people would expect from you, but from a different Yeah. So it's really, I mean, those are typically like 20 to 30 minutes and they really are kind of diving into that business and maybe some of the specifics that they've run into and kind of just walking through like what's worked and not worked for them. Um, so that each business can kind of give a different perspective based on what they do. Okay. Are they now, are they meant to, so maybe I misunderstood. Are they meant to look at their productivity or, are they meant yeah, to so- look at a different way to be pro- like, cause the one I saw, I saw, or saw, I listened to the one where the gal talked about having an assistant, like the personal assistant. So yes. it seemed to fit within the theme of being, uh, yeah. So a lot of it is we'll kind of, we'll dive into their story at first and kind of how they got into business. And then we'll dive into like how they've been more productive within their business. And I think just people seeing different perspectives. So a personal assistant company versus a marketing company versus all of these different types of business, seeing the common thread because it's really all the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, and seeing that common thread, because we do ask the same typical questions most of the time for the guest interviews. Okay. So have you seen a difference in whether people listen to the interviews more or if they listen to the solo? Yeah, I would say it's pretty even. Um, We've had some guest episodes that I just think from their marketing standpoint, they did more and pushed more. So those went a little bit higher Um, or 
I knew it was a guest that people were going to love. So I actually pushed it more. <laughs> um, so there is a little bit of a spike in some of the guest episodes, but I think it's just from the marketing perspective. I don't know that it's necessarily like the content. You know, it's funny because I, this comes up quite a bit. I've interviewed s- several people who have done bowls and almost, I, I don't, I don't remember ever getting a different answer. It is always, you <laughs> always get more listeners with guests. That's why I specialize. That's why I do these hot seats. And I insist like you have to have guests because yeah. it's so powerful when it comes to you, you have this whole other audience of people that know, like, and trust the person who's coming onto your show. Yeah. But every time they say that they get the best comments about the solo and how people are like, I wish you just did those because, (laughs) and I listen to what you have to say. And then I have this great tip and then I just go do it. I don't have to listen to this whole conversation, you know, especially for us, you know, people who are like, Like, okay, I just want the most of our time. Yeah. (laughs) And so I, I can relate to why that's happening, but it's so fascinating to me because it's true. Every every time I've asked that question, it's been that there's more traffic when it comes to a guest. And I 100% agree with your theory that (laughs) it is, it is, it is why it's one of the reasons that I think having guests is so powerful. Um, but it, uh, in addition to, I just think it makes the content better. And honestly, like people can have, you need a contrast as well. So I feel like if we just go on and we just monologue every time it's, you know, they're not going to appreciate it as much if they don't have guests every yeah. once in a while. <laughs> and that's, so. that's kind of our theory on it. I was like, okay, we're going to do one solo, one guest, one solo, one guest. We kind of break it up. And um, I mean, from a logistics standpoint, obviously guests are harder, there's scheduling and like all these moving pieces. Um, now we have a system for that, right? But it does take way more time than me just like knocking out seven solo episodes in an hour and a half. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Well, before we move to the next section of this interview, is there anything that you want to share? Any question that maybe I didn't ask something that would help me better understand, you know, what either what you're doing now or what you want to get out of it, your show moving forward? Um, no, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I feel like we covered a lot. (laughs) <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And this is really a discussion. So even though we're going to transition, I feel like it's very fluid. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> um, so before I, before you came on the show, I promised you two things. One, I promised you that I would be prepared. And the other is that I would give you an actionable step that would get you results in 30 days you know, starting as soon as you start your show back up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or not. I don't know. Cause sometimes that promotion time is a big deal. So, yeah. um, so is it okay if I share Absolutely. Some recommendations? Yeah. Okay. So before I do, I always like to go through my four P's. I know everyone, I know you have P's for I do. Pro- productivity. I've three P's. We've got all the acronyms over here. Every, everybody's got P's. I don't know what it is about the letter P, but everything starts with P. So but I have four P's to preeminence. Uh, num- number one is to know your purpose, which is why we spent that time at the beginning talking about your why. The second is to know your people, really dialing in on your audience messaging, which I can see you're in the process of that right now. Yeah. Uh, number f- three, <laughs> what time is it? No, <laughs> number three is uh, optimize the promotion of your show. So I love that it, you're all about content, but also you've recognized there was probably some ways that you could optimize what you're already doing to really lean into the promotion. And number four is proceeds. I love that you're already thinking about how am I going to monetize, even though it's not a priority. If you don't do it, it's pretty tough to underwrite making all of this sustainable. So you've got a team, which I love. You've got systems in place, which I love. So I'm not concerned about your sustainability. You're also getting clients through the process. That's profitability. So I feel like you're, you're crushing it in that area. So good job. But those are, that's always my framework. I always like to start with that. I'm really talking to me as much as I'm talking to you. (laughs) I like to keep the main thing, the main thing. So that's in my world. Those are the main things. So, all right. Well, let's just start at, at some things that I feel like you're really strong at. I won't hit all of them because there's a lot, but I will talk about some of the things that really stood out to me. Uh, number one, I love how you talk to your guests. I didn't, you know, I know I mentioned it before we started this interview. You just got a really great energy. You've got, you know, this youthful uh 
presence of optimism, the people you bring on your show, the, you know, I listened to a couple of episodes and I felt that same way, like, wow, they share this whole, like, oh, I could do this without a lot of hype. It just was just like a natural, uh, it just felt good. I, I really like the energy. I like the questions that you ask and you telling me now that they're typically the same questions. I'm impressed because it didn't feel that way when you were doing it. So, um, I, I really liked it and it felt like there were people, you know, you knew that you liked, I love the approach of starting local and then expanding nationally. That's just inspiring to me. I'm, I'm such a chicken to do that. I feel like I get more bummed out by my, like if I, I get my feelings hurt easier locally. So I, <laughs> I am completely inspired and, and I'm, I'm actually working on a project where we're going to be launching a local show. And so now I'm just more inspired. Like I can do this thing. So um, just like, just, a just too tender soul, but um, so good job. I love it. Uh, I also, you know, harped on this enough already about the fact that you have a blog, uh, I think is great. Uh, that, and that you drive your traffic to that blog, uh, your show's very professional. You have a call to action. Yes. I'm, I was so excited. And then <laughs> I also noticed that you do kind of an ad for your, your business in the middle and you don't quite know when it is, which is what everyone recommends, which is don't you know, don't, you know, surprise everybody with the ad somewhere. Don't have it in a predictable spot. So good job. Good job on that. Again, optimizing that opportunity. Uh, and your branding is just spot on. I love it. Uh, it's simple. It's, uh, not just about the color and the uh, images, but also just, I, I just feel like when I watch your podcast, I go to your website, I feel like you're the same person. I don't know if you have had that experience, but I, where I feel like, okay, I saw your podcast oh, and then 100%. I just talked to you <laughs> and I feel like those are two different people. What just happened? So, so your branding spot on any feedback about what I just, all that. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm flattered over here. Uh -huh. uh, no, I, I think that we knew a lot of the stuff, but definitely hearing it from an out, outside perspective is super beneficial because then we see that that's what our people are seeing and listening to. So, um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. And PS your backdrop's adorable. Like I really like how it's styled. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I didn't even mention that, the, but the BCO. Yeah. I also have a BCO method. I'm all about the acronyms. Like we have so many acronyms. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I don't know what to say about that. I am. Um, that's my Achilles heel time zone math and acronyms. Those yeah. are two things that I, <laughs> well, I'm not going to time zone math. math so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do I, the one, two, three, every time, every oh, time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I just, I would just appreciate links where people can just book it and yes. just like, I don't <laughs> In fact, I'll be on the phone with someone and I'll be trying to set up a time and I'll, th I'll finally tell them, look, I'm probably going to put it in the wrong time. Right. Could you just like use this link? <laughs> Save us both. I'm going to put it in my time zone and then you <laughs> convert that to whatever that is for you. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Goodness. Anyway, so obviously there, and those are big things. So all those things that we just talked about, those are huge. Yeah. So I, I think it's amazing. You can tell you're two years in, you've got over a hundred episodes under your belt. I feel like, you know, you're going to take this break and you're going to level up. So I, I love it. I, I really am happy about the direction you're 100% on about your messaging that people don't want processes. It'd be like, if I were like, Hey, I, I, I don't know how much, and I'm terrible. Like I'm the worst at this where I'm like, Hey, I'll show you how to use my spreadsheet. And people are like, no, <laughs> People are like, I know I, if you show yeah. me a spreadsheet, I won't be your friend, <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, we're selling the solution, right? So you're really talking about productivity. Yep. So I think that that's a really good pivot and it's not a pivot. I, and un I unsay that it is not a pivot. It is a enhancement, <laughs> we, uh, better we like to call it a rebrand ish. Cause we're not really like <laughs> fully rebranding. Like the colors are staying this, like, it's not a whole thing, but just an ish. <laughs> You're just tweaking the message. You're optimizing the message right now. So, um, okay. So let's, if it's okay, we're going to talk about some areas of opportunity. Yeah, and again, absolutely. this is, uh, so I was a cheerleading coach a long time ago and the, 
I was, I was a cheerleader and our team and our team was awesome. Our daughter was a cheerleader. Their team was awesome. So the things that we worked on, there were tweaks, right? So it's like, we knew how to cheer. We just got better. When I was a coach, I took on this team and it, they were horrible. In fact, my, my pastor was one of our best friends and he refereed girls basketball games. And when I told him what team I was coaching, he was like, they're terrible. And I was like, you're a pastor. Why are you saying that? Like, that's so rude, <laughs> but they were, they were just terrible, and they knew it. And it was embarrassing. But when I worked with them, I really worked on all the fundamentals. And I feel like a lot of times when podcasters are starting out, it's normal. Like it's like, we're starting out a podcast, but, uh, I got the cheerleaders to the point where they were competing and the coach that I was to them after that was a different coach than I was in the beginning. And I feel like you're like, you've done all that hard stuff. You're awesome. Your competition level, like you've done it, you've been doing it. So now we're just going to be talking about things that aren't so sexy, but they're literally will make a difference. And they're, none of these are huge priorities. I wouldn't even say if you never did it, you're still going to have a great show. Um, but if we're talking about, you're already putting all this effort, all this time and money and people into doing your show. Here are some things that I saw. Number one is, um, the first 38 seconds of your show. The first 30 seconds is prime real estate. And if you don't capture people in the first 30 seconds, they're gone. And a lot of times as podcasters to us that like you have a very professional intro. So this, it's not to say you don't have a great intro because you do, you're really clear about what they're going to hear, what's going to happen. If they listen to your show. Awesome. However, you want to grab their attention. And so if they just listen to a show and then it's like, for example, when I prep for these, I listen to podcasts while I'm getting ready for work. And so I'm listening and then maybe one will finish and I'll hear another one. The intro feels really long and it's, it's 38 seconds, um, which I don't even think that that's, I don't think it's bad. I would just say one, you know, like I would play with some ideas on how to freshen it up. So either you could come on beforehand, you know, record, you know, you have a recording of your show, you you could say, you know, Hey, you're about to hear something really great about X, Y, Z don't miss it. And then go into your intro and then have your cool, fancy intro. I would recommend it just be the, just a scoat shorter too. It just a little bit was, uh, felt, you know, a little bit too long or mix it up, you know, maybe have like you in the first half and then another voice in the second half or something just to, cause I feel like I'm, I, if I get in a rut when I'm listening, I don't, I'm like, what just, what did they just say? You know? And then I forget what was said. So, and maybe it's just me, but, um, that just was just some feedback on, on that, but no matter what I would say something that identifies that episode, why it's a cannot miss episode. Okay. Uh, and one thing that we do that, cause I'm processes and I'm not going to just record a whole nother thing for every show is we do the cold open where we just grab, you know, 30 seconds or anywhere between 10 and, and 25 seconds of a, just a really great nugget from the show. And then we put it at the beginning. It's as easy as that. Cause then you just break right into it. And it's like, Whoa, I just landed in the middle of a show. And then they hear the intro, but they're like, Oh, I need to hear how that turned out, you yeah. know? <laughs> so that kind of thing. Um, so there's that. Uh, and then also, um, with the, uh, with the ad, I think when do you bring up hustle and flow in your show? Is it in the middle ad or the beginning? Um, it's the middle ad typically. Okay. I would just, um, okay. I'm, I'm just going to be totally real. Like, I think you're yeah. amazing. Okay. It a little bit feels the same level all the way. So okay. like, if you listen to a song, you know how there's a bridge, yep. like you want it to sound a little bit different to be like, Oh, okay. Oh, we're about to go into the second verse. Yep. And so I would just say, if there's a way to, you know, again, maybe, ha you know, like for myself, I, I send it, I send my stuff sometimes to what is it like creative music? I don't know. One of those professional places. And then some man reads for me just because <laughs> I'm like, I need a man to talk about stuff. Cause uh, you know, cause I'm, it, it's my voice. And then, you know, I have a, a guest too, but, uh, it's just nice to get that. It's, it's a pattern interrupt is what it is. You need a pattern interrupt, whether it's, you could use music or, but something just to kind of go boom. And then again, uh, lean into the hustle and flow. 
Uh, it just, I, I literally, and maybe I'm just 80, maybe I'm undiagnosed ADHD. I don't know, <laughs> but I literally was like, Oh wait, that was an ad. What were you telling me again? Like I literally just went into this, like, Oh, this is really nice to listen to. And then I didn't even hear what was said. So, um, I would just say like, there's, there's exciting stuff in there. And if they've listened to you that much, they want to know what that next step is. And so wake them up and then tell them and then okay. push them back in. Perfect. Okay. Is, is this helpful so far? Oh yeah. Both of okay. Them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. And I feel like it's not like this huge thing that I have to go completely revamp. Right. <laughs> right. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Usually it's not, you know, by the time someone, if, if someone wants to be in a hot seat, it means they've got a good show. I mean, I just props to you for saying, I, I've not only done this for two years, I've put in a hundred up over a hundred episodes and now I want to level up again. I just think your show's great. Like there's you, you're winning before you got here. So, um, and then the other thing is, okay. So at the end of the show, um, I would suggest as I was listening to you talk today, your next step is to be in the community, Right. So I love that you have the call to action in the middle. I love that you have the promise at the beginning. It's like the perfect structure promise in the middle. You've got the, uh, ad in, the, I call it an ad. I'm so sorry, but yeah, no. like you got the pitch in the middle and then yeah. you've got, but it just ends. You see what I'm saying? Okay. And yeah. so I would say, um, I love that the middle pitch is like, okay, you're hearing some stuff. And so if you really want to take a cool next step, here are some options, at the end, I would just tell people like, Hey, you know, not, not these words, but like, we're, we're going to miss you too. go join our club. You know, that's it. Like, don't say anything else because ultimately, uh, and then in your pitch in the middle, do you talk about the community or do you just say like, this is her hustle? No, so the, the ad is actually older. We've, we've keep revamping hustle to flow and adding stuff to it, but the community is something new. We had a Facebook group and we actually moved to a whole different platform and it has its own app and all the things. So, um, it's new, so it's definitely not talked about yet. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, I would just, um, one thing, um, I, there's an interview, our episode 12, our first 12 episodes of next step nation is like our masterclass and episode 12, we interviewed Tom Schwab and he talks about the calls to action. And he says, like, he says to bring three, like have one that's just really easy. That would be your club. Yeah. Um, one that's, uh, kind of the next step. And then one that's like, Hey, if you really want to get serious about this, this is our private, like I do private stuff and yeah. you know, and like, for me, I like two cause I feel like I'm already asking them to keep listening. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's my one. Yeah. Um, so if you, you know, if you were to have the two and you have like, Hey, there's a club, if you just are like, I'm digging this. And then if you really want like, let's expand, then, um, you know, we've got this hustle to flow and, um, so as your, I would just optimize that, that yeah, part of for it. Sure. Um, and then your social media, um, strategy, yeah. I would definitely <laughs> put some time and thought, and you are. So, uh, the biggest thing is, is just really understanding where your people are. You know, there's a lot of people on LinkedIn. I'm just wondering, again, you've got a lot of young, um, you know, starting out, you talk about small teams, things like that. Um, so I could see, you know, if link, if, uh, Instagram's doing it, I don't know if I would change that. A lot of times we'll just optimize for the platform that works. It sounds like you're doing something similar, optimize for the platform that that's where everybody's at and then push it everywhere else. Even though it's not like the perfect content yeah. for that, yeah. who cares? Like it's links back <laughs> and people click on them. You know, I, for a long, when I first moved to, to Billings, Montana, I was working with people and literally I started my company where we wrote blog posts that turned into social media posts that turned into email campaigns. That was it. Like yep. in every blog post, every website, every web page is like a, an employee. It needs a job to do. It needs to have a call to action. It's the only yep. thing we want people doing on that page is just that call to action. And so when we moved into podcasting, I'm like, it's the same thing. Like <laughs> it's exactly <laughs> the same thing. And so, um, so again, when you're doing the social media, we did the same thing. So I was like, oh, Hey, we, we put your content from this blog post all over. We put it on Twitter and LinkedIn and Google my business. We didn't have Google. It was like Google plus at the time, but, yeah. and then it was, you know, Facebook and, and, and that's like those four places and you're going to kill it. And they're like, Twitter. 
really <laughs> nobody nobody shares on twitter i was I'm like not, okay i'm not a twitter fan <laughs> no no whatever if people are clicking on those links and they yeah. were they yep. were clicking on twitter links more than they were clicking anywhere else and i'm like seriously like yeah. if people are going to your website does it matter? And so, and then the SEO that it adds is incredible too, because then it's just telling Google over and over again, it's like a vote. So, um, so just pushing it out systematically (laughs) using the content that you create. So, um, I I don't even, yeah. So I don't even have to talk about that too much with you because I feel like systems are your jam, Yeah, (laughs) figure it out, get it out there. Uh, and then SEO, I would recommend that, um, you know, I, I love set and I haven't been doing this, but when I do it works and I'm always like, I don't know why this is the last thing I do, but you know, sending the content to a writer, even if it's like, here's the transcript, I want you to pull out four things, X, Y, Z, write something. Um, and having that written, especially if you have an episode that got a lot of attention, you know, it's just kind of fueling what's already working. So if you have a guest, you're like, Oh my gosh, everybody, you know, I got so much attention on that one. That would be the one to send to the writer and have them write a blog post about. And then even if like one, one thing we do is our blog posts automatically get pushed out with the RSS feed. And, um, so when that happens and if we go back and write a blog post about it, it's similar to what Neil Patel teaches about where you go back and, you know, you rewrite these, these posts that are getting more traffic. I would go and look at your stats for your blog post and see what's getting the most traffic. So when people are looking on, on search engines and they're pulling up what, put, what page is getting pulled up the most. And then I would rewrite that. And then I would, you know, push it out the way that you're doing. I'd also, you know, this is just a little tweak and you could have a different philosophy behind it, but like my philosophy with blog posts is like with the sidebar, I'm not a big sidebar fan just because I'm like, I just want you to do one thing like, and, but yet still embed the audio. And then at the bottom, it's like, join the club. You know, if you want everyone joining the club, that should be their only choice. Like they shouldn't get to join a newsletter. They shouldn't, you know, like they should just like join the club or, or sign up, you know, kind of a thing. So kind of back to that. Was that helpful? Absolutely. Yes. Um, because I think again, the outsider's perspective, right. I'm over here systematically, like we just jump in, here's the intro, then we do this. And then we're going to throw the ad in the middle at the exact same spot. And it's a whole thing. So, um, just hearing that I think is huge. And I think we can systematize it easy and like take a piece, make that the hook, then drop the episode in, um, and then change up the ad for sure. So those, I think those are my top two is the hook and the ad. I think just because we're on break right now, I think it's easy to transition and fix that before we restart. Um, I'd probably be more overwhelmed if we were like in the middle of the season. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I would say, (laughs) excuse me, I would say too, if I, if I could just pick two things that I could make you do, one would be the first 30 seconds would just be grab them. Cause you're, you know, you're doing stuff and getting them there. You just want them to stay. Uh, and the people who are with you are going to listen because they know that what get, you know, it's the new people. So if we're talking about your goal is that you're going to have new people, that first 30 seconds is going to make a big difference. The other is that since you already have a blog and I would go and look at those, that data and just see what is getting, have you looked at your web stats already? Yeah. See, to me, that would matter more than all of it because, uh, Edison came out and I don't know, they've probably done, you know, more research since then. But one of the top ways that people find podcasts is through a web search because they're looking up a topic. Like they could be looking up, you know, our personal assistance only for housewives or only for, um, rich housewives, you know, yep. Beverly Hills <laughs> or something. And, uh, and then they're going to come across that blog post. And, um, if that's you, whatever they're looking for, it's going to give you so much good information beyond the social media beyond because you, it's hard to control any of their algorithms, yeah. but I feel like, I feel like the search engine, if they're pulling up your website, that's to me a big, a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> so, <for sure. laughs> so that, that I would just lay, especially since you're already doing it, if you hadn't been doing a blog post, I feel like you'd be a little bit behind. Like, it's like, okay, get it going. And then now look at what everybody's looking yeah. at. But I think it's just a overlooked indicator of uh, topical interest. And again, you know, as you have time, if 
this is again, not my top two things, but going back and rewriting like the top one or two, I think you'd find, uh, it's just pouring gasoline on what's already working. So, so awesome. Any questions or feedback? (laughs) No, that was awesome. Um, I think, I mean, we're already in this transition phase of kind of rebranding and we've hit those top like topics that people need just within the community. So I think just processing that through the podcast, it's just going to make it easier. Well, and two, one thing you've mentioned a few times is like this break and then pushing out more social media about podcast episodes that have happened already. That's actually my next season will begin again. As soon as that starts happening, because what you're probably finding is the same thing I'm finding. It's like, I've I've already said it. We all know we have to say it, you know, a thousand times for people to hear it (laughs) and we still probably won't get credit, but that's okay. Uh (laughs) Um, but ultimately it's still that same, it's just getting it out there. So even though, I mean, you look at again, back to Neil Patel, it's like you look at articles that he's done. I find his articles at the top of Google that are like four or five years old, you know, and and you're putting out content today. It's not going to change. I mean, I was, you know, I mean, talking about story branding and things like that. I mean, we were talking about this, you know, what, 10 years ago. So I mean, so (laughs) there's there's no new information in the world. It's just package it. (laughs) And they're great interviews. So why not keep people listening to those? So, uh, so just, I think you're, you're, that's really wise to go back and, and do that and, uh, re re, uh, publicize those old ones. So, well, before we move on, I just want to give you a moment. Just why don't you tell everybody number one, what show should they search for when they're listening to this? And then number two, where can they find you? And what, what do you, you know, what can you do for them? Yeah, for sure. Um, and you put me on the spot cause I don't remember the number of the episode, but it is our three P's of productivity. Um, that's one of our core systems that we use for all of our students, all of our clients. I use it for myself. Um, it's our end of day process. That was a game changer in my business in increasing productivity. Um, and it's just a super simple three-step end of day process to really wrap up and kind of prep for the next day. So I would definitely go check that out. And then best place to find us is probably Instagram and we're Brittany and co.consulting over there. Um, and then our community, of course, the productivity pod community, uh, it is actually the link currently is hustle to flow.co forward slash community. So, um, it's hosted on mighty networks. It's not a Facebook group. Uh, most of my people are very distracted and kind of all over and shiny object syndrome. So we got them completely off of Facebook. They have their own app. We tell them to put it beside Facebook so they can come check it at the same time. Uh, but it's really cool. It allows you to really just connect with other like-minded business owners. Uh, we do a free, uh, office hours once a month. We have a coffee and connection call once a month, and we also have a, um, happy hour. So not just the business stuff, but come in and, and chat about your personal life too. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for that, Brittany. I really appreciate it. And definitely go check her out. Go listen to her podcast. It's just really, it's really, really great. Um, I think you've got really good tips on being more productive and ways that, I mean, even hearing ways that like, why be more productive? You know, why does it even matter? (laughs) So, uh, and how that actually can reap a lot of really great, uh, rewards. So I really appreciate that. So thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you so much to everyone who's listening. Remember, don't be average, be brave, take action and make magic happen. Thanks so much for listening.